Okay, what, what can I do? Whatever you do has to be more shoppable. But other than that, as long as it's um, distracting the public, disrupting the public, but not um, obstructing. And okay. that's fine because we still need public access. And <coughs> how much of the width of the Well, it's, it's a very, very wide pavement, so yeah. you could use half okay. quite easily. I, well, I'm the artist who's brought the um, post apocalyptic costume for, um, and I'm just kitting them all out, making sure everyone's alright to wear them and things, and hopefully it won't be too hot. I've used these outfits before, um, never been to Swansea before, and uh, it should all be alright. I've never done it on this scale either before, so hopefully it'll be looking, <laughs> looking quite good. Fingers crossed. I'm not sure how breathable it is, so if you need to take it off. <laughs> I, can't, I can't hear you, sorry. It's got a cooling system. Yeah. <laughs> This is um, a poncho that you just sort of put on like a dress and then there's little arm holes there for you. Good afternoon sir. Uh, are you lost? Are you stuck in the illusion? Can I help you? The Over here group. is the truth. You will find the truth just to your left here. Yeah, there's the truth. <laughs> people, people, people in society normally live in their mind illusion. And their mind illusion is their success, it's what you should do, it's what you hope for, it's money, it's achieving a target, it's having a nice house. call it an action of kind of the end of the world and the flood and the, and the praying for everything that is in the newspaper that you're told to consume and buy and own and, and uh, yeah it's kind of I had one person ask me what it was that I was doing and I said well what do you think I'm doing and uh, I said it is a performance art festival and she was like so she kind of got the idea but it's kind of if there, if there is the end of the world, it's going to flood. But then, have we just been praying to sort of meaningless pieces of paper and meaningless objects and stuff like that? So, we've been praying around the streets, and uh, it's exhausting and hot. It's hot, isn't it? <laughs> it was good. I, was, I could only do it for an hour. I think you could do it all day. I prayed about it. And I'm not a religious person, so it's. It's a different type of prey. My shamanic duck, which if there was a, fl a flood, he would be at the top. Oh, be at the, uh, yeah. This is my listening room, and I'm inviting people to come in and have their stories heard. The stories that they really want to tell and that they feel are important. It's like a confessional, they can't see me now. I'll pass them um, cards to ask them to talk about certain things. So tell me about, we've got love, what are you afraid of, the thing that you need to be uh, heard, and when have you been happiest, so just prompts like that, and I'll pass them through from the other side of the box, and hopefully that will encourage people to talk. This is just a collection of stories, and then in, um, on these cards is people's memories that people can look at to make them think about the things that are important to them. Um, and then on the front we've got the sign for empathy there, which is what I'm trying to share. That's something that a, a French artist has developed called Damien Jonquet, 
and that's his sign for empathy. Um, and then at the end, I give everybody a little card to say that they've been heard. And on that is the actual official symbol for empathy, the international symbol for empathy, which I didn't know existed till the other day. Okay. So they get that at the end. It's just witnessing the stories. So it's just about what people feel is important to share right. and hearing those stories and the, the kind of the process of really being listened to. So it's about active listening and the, the feeling that gives you if you've actually been heard properly. What is that? Actually, they're in motion, so they're moving all the time. So, on another way, uh, I'm pleading for change and disrupting the, the static um, society. Um, we're up by at the old Elysium, towards right. the train station. Coming out last words and doing some poetry. These are We've actual some... famous last words? Yeah, actual famous last words. What's your favourite famous last word? <laughs> Does nobody understand? Um, go away, I'm alright. Quite like that one. That's H.G. Wells. I'm bored with it all. Oh, fair play. I'm asking the public a really simple question, which is how far is home? And I've already done the performance in Wrexham, and I'm going to go around Britain um, doing a couple of performances. And I want to see whether Wrexham being a, a very small town has um, a different uh, outcome to Swansea, which has a lot of um, student population and um, immigrants. Um, um, people who are um, kind of passing through as opposed to being at uh, home. So I'm going to map the work at, at the end and compare. Do you want a sticker? There you go. And sticking on the window, you can see in there, that's where people have found homes really close to them emotionally. And other people say that they haven't found it missing people. It's kind of close to this. How far away you feel from home. Your, your, not Swansea, but your home. Do you feel right now far away from home? Do you feel really far away?